The greatest weakness of simple substitution ciphers is that they can be attacked through letter frequency analysis. In a long enough message, we can expect that the most frequent letters are going to be E, T, A, I, O, and N. Homophonic ciphers, homophonic meaning same sound, attempt to flatten out the letter frequency distribution by assigning multiple letters or symbols or characters to the same letter, as shown here. Homophonic ciphers were first described in a 14 volume Arabic administrative encyclopedia completed in 1412 AD. The Duke of Mantua in modern day Lombardy, Italy, was using homophonic ciphers in the early 1400s. Let's meet in the training room. In its raw form, any alphanumeric character can be used in the homophonic cipher alphabet. The only requirement is that there needs to be multiple values for each of the high frequency letters. This can be accomplished most easily by using two digit pairs. This way we can pick 12 values for E, 10 for T, 8 for A, all the way down to one each for the low frequency letters like J, P, V, X, and Z, like so. The problem is that this is impossible to memorize, requiring that the sender and receiver keep copies of the table or reference sheet that can be discovered by outsiders. And the only way to change the key is to issue an all new randomized assignments table each time. A more user-friendly recreational cryptography variant uses a simple table of four rows of 25 numbers, running from 01 to 99, then 00. In this table, I and J double up. This variant is used by the American Cryptogram Association. The ACA is not a sponsor. Link in the description below. The table consists of the alphabet A through Z, followed by the numbers 1 to 25, 26 to 50, 51 to 75, and 76 to 00. Now, to create the keyed alphabet, we pick a four-letter word that we place in a column to the left of the table. This can be a real word or just a random collection of letters. If you enjoy recovering the key, then using real words is more fun. If you want tighter security, just use random letters. I'll use word. We place word in the column to the left of the table. So the final step is to rotate each line so the numbering for that line starts with the matching letter in the key. On line 1, 0, 1 is under the W. Line 2, 26 starts at O. Line 3, 51 is at R. And line 4, 76 is under D. Encryption. Once the table is constructed, encryption is simple. First, Pick the keyword and construct the table. Then go through the plain text one letter at a time. Place the letter at the top of the table and select one of the four two-digit pairs from that column at random. Write the desired pair in the cipher, keeping the space breaks, and continue to the next plain text letter. For the example, this is a test message. Under T, we have 23, 31, 53, and 91. I'll pick 23. Under H, there's 12, 45, 67, and 80. Let's take 80. And keep repeating this process until the end of the text. Notice that any two people can create two completely different messages. And while IS appears twice in the message, we have two different pairs, 13 and 90, 
and 68 and 52. Regardless, we're done with the encryption phase. Decryption. Take the keyword and make the table. I think that having the plain text alphabet below the numbers is a little easier to use. Go through the cipher message in pairs. Locate the number in the column over the correct plain text letter and write the letter in the message. Strip out the extra spaces, regroup into words. This is a test message, and we're done. Analysis. On short messages, it's easy to select digit pairs so that each pair appears only once throughout the cipher text, giving a perfectly flat distribution. With longer messages, digits will start repeating for the more frequent letters. Security-wise, you can still make the text harder to solve by avoiding direct repetitions in pattern words. Or you can make the cipher easier for the solver by deliberately retaining patterns. Notice here in deliberately, E is identified as 09 in two places. If we're told that deliberately is in the plain text, this pattern may let us place it in the cipher. More on this technique in the solving video. If you want to try your hand at solving homophonic substitution, I pinned a few practice scripts in the comments below. If you want to see some methods for solving homophonic substitution ciphers, you can join the Black Chamber on Patreon to get access to the next video when it comes out, or wait until it goes public on YouTube sometime later. That's enough for now. See you at the next drop point. Got questions, comments, or suggestions? Leave them in the comments below. Enjoyed this video? Then I encourage you to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. If you want to show further support, you can join us over at the Black Chamber Patreon page, where you can get access to more how-to videos and PDFs on solving the cipher types covered here, additional crypts to solve, and more. Links pinned in the comments below. See you at the next drop point.